It's Chris. Why won't you believe me? Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Memaseek. And today we're going to talk about more casting. I know there's a release date. I know, I know, I know. We're going to get to that in the very next episode. Um, but in this episode, I want to talk one more uh, piece of casting that we got, which is Janet Porter. If you go to the INDB page, you'll see that Janet Porter has been cast as Annette Birkin, Sherry Birkin's mom and the wife of William Birkin, and a, a brilliant scientist who helps develop the G-Virus with William and then uh, ends up having, at least in the remake, has a pretty good arc. I, she kind of has an arc in the uh, first Resident Evil 2 game as well, but I really like, uh, they emphasize it more in the Resident Evil 2 remake, and I really like her character in that game with uh, her relationship with Sherry, where she's like this distant mother, like her and William were distant parents to Sherry, and Sherry didn't really have anyone there to like raise her, and she was left at home a lot, you know, making her own meals and stuff and, and, and things like that, you know, and, and kind of left to her own. So Sherry's one of those like, you know, kids that grows up too fast because she has to learn to take care of herself because her parents are always working for the Umbrella Corporation and making these, um, you know, this new virus and stuff. Um, so we have Annette here, though, in, in the Resident Evil 2 remake. Like I said, she's a distant uh, parent, but she she does care for Sherry. She does care for her daughter, but she also cares for her husband. And she realizes what they've done is they've created a, a disaster. The G virus is uncontrollable it's breaking out it's causing t-virus outbreaks in the lab uh raccoon city is infected now because of their efforts and uh, and and their work and she's trying to take ownership of that and stop william because she didn't have the guts to do it right when he got infected and now she's like all right this is my chance i gotta stop him before he gets out of the city or something worse happens um and uh, and i gotta keep my daughter away from all this so there's a reason why she's distant in the game and she starts to like soften up and towards the end uh, in claire's ending actually has a breakthrough moment of a, as a character and confesses to Sherry, uh, you know, that she and asks for forgiveness in a way and tells her daughter, Sherry, that she loves her very much and that, uh, and that she, you know, she wishes she was a better mother. Take my daughter to safety. I'm sorry, Sherry. For everything. Your life is what is important. We can't just leave her here. You're right, we can't. Attention, unauthorized removal of a level 4 virus detected. What does that mean? It's a self destruct code. In case a G virus leaves the building. And that's that's some real growth there, you know. It's like it sucks that it had to happen right at her deathbed, but um, but you know, typically that does happen in um in life and in you know stories, obviously in general too. So I'm excited. Like Janet Porter looks very much like the remake version of of Annette. Uh, you know, actually she's a good cast. Like she's actually a good choice. And uh, and I'm really digging. I want to see what they do with Annette in this movie. Again, there's so many characters in here. Some of them that actually have arcs in the video games. I'm curious if those arcs will remain in this movie. I really hope so, um, even if it's a different arc, as long as there's something there to the characters, because that's the one thing I think the previous Resident Evil movies were awful at was actually having character arcs and you know and, and developing characters. They were terrible at that. I hope this movie, if anything, I give as a compliment to this movie. I hope it at least does that. I hope it at least pays you know some respect to these characters because there is more to them than just generic villain or generic hero or things like that. Uh, they have. There's actual life in these characters. And I know some people who, you know, don't like video games might not like hearing that, but it's true. Uh, some video game characters have real depth to them and have arcs. Even if they're surface level arcs, there's still something there. And I hope those translate to the movie in a good way. So let me know what you think of Janet Porter playing uh, Annette Birkin. And let me know, are you excited to see Annette in the movie? What do you hope they do with her in the film? Do you hope it's a similar arc to her in the game? Do you want to see something different done with her? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And yes, I know, the next episode, I promise, make sure you stay subscribed. We will talk about the release date for this movie, at least the one that's planned right now. Uh, hopefully they'll stick to it because it still is a Sony movie, 
but it's also a Screen Gems movie. And Screen Gems did release Monster Hunter in the theater during the pandemic, uh, you know, kind of to test the waters with Sony to see how well it would do. But they still took the, you know, uh, initiative to release a movie during all this. So I feel like maybe this could be a release date they actually stick with. But who knows? With Sony over it too, you never know. So we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't get pushed back. So we'll talk about that in the next episode for sure. So let me know your thoughts on Annette and Janet down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.